I had optioned a script um, called Splashdown about an astronaut coming back to Earth. And so I started kicking around the idea of what if a female astronaut was discovered to be pregnant on a flight to Mars. So I picked up the phone, and my dad was a heart specialist, and one of his colleagues worked at NASA. And I got on the phone, and I called some scientists at NASA, and I said, what would happen? And there was like dead silence on the phone call. And they said, have you been listening to our conversations? And I said, no, I've never spoken to you before. They said, it's going to happen. A woman will get pregnant. We don't know what to do. We don't know, do we turn the mission around? Do we abort the child? Could the child possibly survive through eight, nine months just gestation in zero gravity? Would he be 10 feet tall? Would he ever make it? And so that's where I started with the story. Peter has a great sense of humanity to him. Uh, he's a very gifted filmmaker, very, very specific in design, uh, in visuals, and storytelling. But he, he connected with the story that I wanted to tell a, a, about what it means to be human and, and how we connect or, or disconnect. So he found um, even more of the humanity in the story than perhaps um, was on the page, which is what you hope for in a director, to take a piece of material and elevate it. Asa is extraordinary. Uh, when I started working on this idea, um, I saw Hugo, Martin Scorsese's picture. I saw B Boy in the Striped Pajamas first and saw Hugo. And I went, wow, if this is not the kid for this movie, I don't know who is. And he has, there's something that's kind of a quarter beat off about him that's interesting. He's got the most piercing blue eyes. Is it kind of an old soul? She's a very feisty, uh, strong-willed young woman, um, extremely bright. And they make a fascinating couple because she's five foot three and he's six foot one, and they have this odd dynamic. You have the, uh, the, I would say, the central story of a YA, Romeo and Juliet, set against an enormous landscape. Um, you know, the kind of the running joke for us early on is this is the fault in our Mars. Because you have a child, uh, you don't know who's going to survive and who's not. Um, so I think that story will appeal to young people. I think that will, is a universal tale um, that will appeal to everybody. It's appealing to me. It's appealing to Peter Chelson. We're not teenagers. But um, it is that loss of innocence. Um, it is that uh, desire to fit in. Everyone feels they're different. So I think that's the universal part of it. But on top of that, we have this m landscape and this action picture of coming on rockets and flying in planes and helicopters and driving cars and rovers on Mars that are going 60 miles an hour. Guys love that stuff. I love that stuff. My son loves that stuff. I think that will be for all the techies and the sci-fi geeks. They're going to dig this story because it's real. It's very grounded. Um, I think the story of Nathaniel Shepard uh, and um, Kendra Wyndham, uh, Gary and uh, Carla, is more of an adult story. These are people that have given up long-term relationships, have sacrificed in their life, and are lost. They're isolated. They, 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 they haven't found their mate. Um, and I think that's a very relatable story. And it's a familiar uh, milieu of, of a Romeo and Juliet-esque story at the core and then with four characters that are isolated trying to find connection. It's pretty universal, I think.